damn these knee. These Biloxi blues, it happens every night. Every night. And I ain't never met a riverboat dealer that could ever be a friend of mine. Sam, have you ever met a riverboat dealer? Treats me kindly. A few. I don't trust none of okay. them. Okay, see? That's why Sam's my guy right here. I don't trust nobody. <laughs> see? This highway does not know my name and I don't care who I And if Sam can't trust you, I don't care about you at all. Heading my way for another place and I got three good tires and a Right to the hook right here. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to keep this. Budget live, not so live from the low budget live bar and grill in beautiful Southern Middle Tennessee. And this is the podcast for February 20th, Monday, February 20th. I hope all you low lifers are doing well out there. You might notice a few things different. We got a new camera this week. We're playing around with some things. I'm not a camera operator, so I have no clue. And and we are joined in the bar and grill by the one and only Sammy George. This is my first time here. Dude. As long as we've been doing this. And this is, <laughs> we were just talking about this. I said we're going to have to start calling it low to increasing budget live because <laughs> this is a lot nicer than the nasty wet carpet hotels where this started in. <laughs> Sammy has been there since the beginning. We did shoot one at the kitchen table here one time. Uh, years ago when I got another oh, yeah, new yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? We actually yeah, did an actual yeah. live years ago yeah. here at the house. But uh, I can't believe, because we, we have some get-together. You've never been to the 4th of July shindig, have you? I did once, yeah. But it, it was, was before uh, this was finished, though, I bet. Yeah, I learned a lot. I learned Atkins can't fit through a pool float. Uh, <laughs> we have that on video. He, we do. Yeah. Just shout uh, out Justin. <laughs> he's also scared of fireworks. Yes. Uh, yes. But, yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> Good time. But I guess this was not completed then. That would have been like 2018, I think. So, yeah. yeah it's no, been, I hadn't it's been, been here in a while. And and a lot has changed here. A lot has changed in your life. We're going to get to all that. But yeah. the podcast is, uh, I said this last week, and Sammy's talking about this uh, extended budget live, I think is what we could call it. Um, new camera, new lighting on the way. Got some new lights in here. But I'm fixing to change the look. This is not how it's going to look. I'm not going to do it from the bar anymore. Fix and change some things. Uh, might not be within the next couple of episodes, but I'm working on things, man. I busted my my ass all weekend last weekend to uh, rearrange in here in the bar and grill, and just want to keep it fresh. Want to change it up. So uh, welcome again to once to once and uh, to all you uh, to low lifers out there. I don't even know what I'm saying this morning. Uh, proud to have Sammy in studio. I'm proud to have the supporters of this show. Want to run through those real fast. Startron, Starbright, Startron kicking ethanol in the teeth in your weed eater, in your chainsaw, but most importantly in your outboard engine because as Sammy can can tell you, he's got nine events this year. He's trying to make the Bassmaster Elite Series and one little hiccup because a stupid dumb ethanol can cost you money, any kind of mechanical failure. And if you're just a guy like me and you're out there on the weekends trying to catch a bass, you don't want problems. So drop a little Startron in your tank, kick ethanol in the teeth. We appreciate it. The folks from Star Tron bringing you low budget live for many years now and making all this these these increased budget live uh, things possible. Pro Guide Batteries, ProGuideBatteries.com. I'm running those lithium Pro Guides for the trolling motor setup this year. I got the 31 series AGM cranking battery running my live scope, running all my graphs. Sammy and I were actually just talking about you. You said you want a, a lithium battery just for live scope. Yeah, yeah. I've I've never run a lithium, mostly just because I, I mean I, I mean, for cranking. I've never run a lithium period. Oh, okay. And, okay. and I know that's a new thing. And I, at first, they kind of you know made us all a little nervous just because of the kind of horror stories. That's but right. they've man, the they they have got that technology dialed so down, like so perfect now that I just haven't run them just because I mean I just don't want to spend a bunch of money on batteries. But but I think that uh, as much as that you know live scope and everything. Uh, has become a thing I, i'm probably this year going to run just like a designated lithium battery just for that just where i only have one thing on that battery 
no interference, no nothing, have the most power I can get. So. Well, I know somewhere you can get one. ProGuyBatteries.com, use code LBL10. Yep. Thank you for helping me with my sponsor. Yep. And I say this every week. I did not run lithiums until last year, partnering with ProGuide. And the reason being is there were horror stories, and there still are some. And be careful who you trust with lithium batteries. I would say that. The ProGuide folks have been in the battery game for 30 years Lithium is new to them, but they did not just fly by night. Yeah. Come out. They tested this product through and through. So check them out, proguybatteries.com. Baitworks.com, bait-works.com. The LOB jig is there. It's ready. Use code DUNCAN-10 to get that LOB. It's got the LBL logo on it, dang it. You should own some of those. Sammy George was reaching out to me. Hey, is it a good brush to you? Yes. Yes, it is. Get I'm you fixing a... to dig around this garage in a minute. Oh, they some, so. they some laying around here. They're some not, going back to Alabama. They're just not in the pretty package version here. But you can get those baked-works.com. If, you, if they ain't got it, you don't need it. And don't hit order if you don't want it on your doorstep. They get it to you very fast. Baitworks.com. We appreciate Baitworks. And last but not least, hang this old banner over my shoulder. <laughs> The Bassmaster Classic winning high-performance all-welded aluminum boat that Sam George is going to get to play around in today. The Express X21 Pro LE. Blown away by that boat every time I get it on the water. Sea Deck bow to stern. 250 Yamaha show pushing that bad boy around. More tackle stores than you can shake a stick at. Best hole shot in the game. Go for a ride in one, and you will see why Express Boats has build, been building excitement since 19. 66 absolutely love that boat and love all the sponsors and uh proud to have sammy george in studio today so this is the sauce with sammy george presented by the w sauce we're sure 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 sauce i gotta get you some of that too before you go home the fire shire will light you up but this this is my favorite man pork chops and uh just basically anything. We cooked up some chops last last night with that marinating on there. I'm all but it's, about that. This is America, and that's our Worcestershire sauce, the W sauce. These colors don't I run. I call it Worcester. Did you see, speaking of colors don't run, did you see Chris Stapleton? Did you hear him sing? I did, I National, did. He, he, that, that brought grown men listen, to tears. Listen, Francis Incredible. Scott Key wrote that song. Chris Stapleton rewrote it. Yeah. He rewrote it. I'm a I'm a Chris Stapleton fan. He's he's fantastic, but but I, I just felt like I was just pounding a bottle of America's Wish while he's drinking. Ah, just taking sorry. shots. These colors don't run. <laughs> The whole time, man, I I would have damn I'd have fist fought a, a Chinese grizzly bear, <laughs> shot took down a damn balloon. Yeah, yeah. How did it make it past your house and not get shot down? I really, really, really want to know how it made it past BK's house in East Tennessee and did not make it down. When I saw it was going there, I was like, oh, there is no way it makes we, it to the coast. We've gotta we've gotta ask BK that a little bit. We gotta get yeah, BK on the yeah. phone. I need to know why the China balloon was, made it past his. I house. think he was in Missouri that week hunting so but we, technically he, he came may, across there yeah tennessee's defender may have not been in <laughs> been in the house when it well, came by i made a post that said i was the middle tennessee district fair balloon dart champ for many years <laughs> i got so many of my middle school girlfriends some teddy bears and whatnot it better not have flown over the the bar and grill here it would have oh, been yeah. trouble but by the time I got the notification it was over Middle Tennessee, they had done shot it down in the damn ocean. So some information was not exactly accurate. Yeah. yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that. Well, dude, now they're shooting down a couple more of them. I'm just like. Yeah, during the Super Bowl, we have UFOs flying around. And then I saw uh, this morning, this is this is a fishing podcast, by the way, and I'm totally here for this. But I saw this morning that uh, there's, they saw some Russian – they got some Russian military planes, like, flying around Alaska or something. What, what's happening right now? I don't know. It, it's like, is, are we headed into, I mean, world – world – that's – you know, world war is a hard thing to say. Yeah. World war. It's a tongue twister. Three. Uh, I hope not because I feel like that's not going to be good. Would not be good. Uh, not be good. Everybody's just going to be like – Shooting no- nukes at each other, yeah. and there'd be a lot of stuff moved really low on the totem pole. Yeah, the so. yeah that's a fact. Uh, hopefully not, but hopefully that's not the case. And and all I want to say is, China, if you're listening uh, to this podcast, just quit sending your damn balloons over here. Yeah. Um, you know, we do a lot of business with your country over there. Quit sending the balloons. We, uh oh, who's calling? Who Uh-oh. is it? Who's calling? 
Who was it? Let us know. Is it Little Alton? No. Is he fishing today? Oh, that was actually my reminder to call uh, our marketing guy at Lou's. We're supposed to have okay. a meeting this morning. Okay. Well, you we'll, we'll kick that back a little bit. We'll, we'll kick, he, know, he knows we're coming, so. All right. We'll perfect. See. Perfect. But, yeah, China, if you're listening again, just stop because these colors don't run. Chris Stapleton, just, China, if you're, if you're listening, listen to that Chris Stapleton's just national anthem. It'll change your mind about us. Quit sending the damn balloons. All I want to know, uh, all I care about, though, is that we don't get in a fight with Japan because yeah. they're they're fishing, I mean, just techniques and lures. We need them here. Yep. And China's never brought us anything in bass fishing except cheap crankbaits. <laughs> yeah. They do a lot of business in the they do bass a lot of fishing ba- industry. Listen, China bring you a lot of your rod and reels. <laughs> Not so much the development. But, but hey, they're going to get it to you. They're going to get yeah. it to you. Send it in a container loader. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some of the stuff we're back ordered on, utilize them balloons to drop it over here. If you can get them balloons here so quick, I mean, they, you could, do that? they could overnight it from the factory. <laughs> <laughs> drop it right here, China. China. I don't know how we got on that kick, but uh, crazy bass fishing news in the last week. You and I were, were just talking about this before we hit record. The goat, KVD. Hanging up the cleats, man. That's weird. It is. It That's is. Weird. Uh, it was kind of a. It was last week. It was an announcement. Really, I guess it came out last Monday. I think he and Tom Brady had an ongoing bet who was going <laughs> to quit first. Tom gave in, so he was said, I, "I can do it too." Tom was <laughs> like, "Fishing? What is fishing?" Yeah, he seems like a prick. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a Tom Brady guy, but I don't think he probably even knows what the bass fishing world. Probably not. But. You know. Uh, Certainly want to say, though, thanks to Kevin for everything that he's – listen, I can remember being a kid. I'm a lot older than Sammy, but I'm sure Sammy's had these same DVDs and magazines and things. But I had a Kevin Van Dam spinnerbait tip video from Bass Pro Shops. Now, I'll never forget it. He had a, a quantum energy rod and reel set up. It was this brown quantum reel. And for Christmas, I begged and begged and begged and begged and begged. And I got that exact setup. And, son, I was spinnerbaiting like Van Dam when I was oh, like yeah. 13 or 14 years old, backlashing every other cast with that 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 reel. But I remember the coolest thing in this video is they filmed a spinnerbait from down in the water column. And he was kind of burning it across the surface. Yeah. And he was talking about, and it always stuck with me. He was a big trailer hook guy, which I always have been. My dad never was, and we would argue over that. I yeah. love a trailer hook. Kevin's like, always throw a trailer hook, always throw a trailer hook, always throw a trailer hook. People have mixed emotions on that sometimes. If you talk to a Jason Christie, if you talk to a Gerald Swindle especially. It, it's situational. It is situational. But Kevin was like, always throw a trailer hook. Like just I get always. hung too much. Yeah, and so I just, as a kid, I just always was obsessed with it. My dad would be like, boy, take that trailer hook off and get hung. <laughs> and I'm like, well, Kevin Van Dam says, Dad. So uh, I owe Kevin for a lot of the fights I got in with my dad growing up in the bass boat. But but I remember, though, he's he was, like, talking about the profile, the silhouette of that spinnerbait. And then the way he narrated this piece, I was just like, I felt like I knew everything. But just whether it was showing us how, I mean, you and I, Tennessee River kids, exploiting them oh, yeah. on ledges, cranking and bringing us crankbaits like those six XDs and yep. all of these in- innovative techniques, but also not being afraid to be a finesse fisherman, but just being the damn goat. I just want to say that, like, there's a lot of talk now, and and I had Jacob Wheeler on a couple years a couple years ago, a couple weeks ago. How the dust will settle. This is like LeBron and Michael yep. Jordan and all that, and the game has changed. Uh, but damn, man, for what that guy did in this sport, what he did in electronics, helping out companies like Hummingbird and, and working with Nitro Bass Boats to develop boats and, and all the products he's he's been involved in over the years, like just hats off to you. Um, my favorite Kevin Van Dan, and I'll tell this just because hopefully we'll get Kevin on, um, but Kevin, I was at a – I'll tell this on Kevin – I was at a writer's conference. I've told you this before, but Kevin had had a couple couple drinks. I'll tell this on Kevin. <laughs> and he'd had a couple drinks, and it was a quantum writer's event, and I was invited by my buddy Guck, Alan McGuck, and all these writers in the room, and they were in, unveiling these new products. This is back in the day, and this was at uh, Big Cedar Lodge. And I happened to be in town for TH Marine, so I got to I got to be a part of this. Just kind of fly on the wall. And I was playing guitar, me and Casey Ashley, 
shout out Casey Ash. We were sitting around picking and greening. And uh, the president of Quantum was like, okay, this is our new Kevin Van Dam blah, blah, blah spin reel, right? And Kevin was like, yep, and it's the shit because I designed it. <laughs> Dude, this happened repeatedly for like 30 minutes. And he's one of the few that can get away with that. Yes. Yes, but I was like, I was like in the corner, like, hell yeah. Like Ugh. this is like 10 years ago stuff, man. But he he was like, I decided here's why. And but but his passion, what I'm getting at is though, his passion is truly incredible. His competitive nature is amazing. It doesn't matter if you're throwing freaking uh cornhole or freaking fishing for a living. Like the yeah. dude wants to slice your throat. Like yeah. he is uber competitive. But uh, but that was always one of my favorite Kevin moments. Oh yeah. It's the shit. He was, I designed it. His classic win at uh, Lay Lake was like the one that was the first classic oh, I'd been such to. A good one. I was 14, maybe 13, 14. And, and my mom took me down there with a, a buddy of mine. And I mean, that was the first classic I'd ever been to. And I mean, I just remember standing in that arena like, like this is what I want to do. And then, uh, you know, fast forward ow, four or five years in 2013, uh, we had the, the Toyota owners event on wheeler and he was like the mc and stuff and actually handed me the check that oh, that's the one you won start, yeah, yeah that that tournament okay. alone gave me just enough money to pay my entry fees and like in, in a division or two and get some recognition and basically just trickle started like that whole adventure no. and then he was the one that handed me the check for that I never realized yeah. that. Very so, cool, dude. I got it's chills. pretty. It's pretty neat. That, that's awesome, man. That Lay Lake Classic. Gosh. Oh yeah. I'm back there in that little honey hole, just catching them on that lipless, dude. Oh yeah. Hair looking perfect too. Bring that up with BK. Bring that story up with BK. There's a little more to that story. There's a little more to the story. On the Lay Lake deal. On the Lay Lake deal. It wasn't just all on a lipless. There may Catch have been on a flat side. Maybe, and it may have actually been handcrafted by somebody that we're really close with. Come on, I got to get that story. All right, we're gonna call him here in a minute. I can't. I can't. I can't help it. We got to get him on the phone. Yeah. I got to hear this. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how in depth we'll go, but you know. Okay. If you zoom in on camera. There's a little more to the story. Oh well, that. See, that was before all the live coverage and stuff, though. Yeah. You could get away with whatever. You oh, could it, say. everything contributed heavy, heavily. But yeah, was, yeah. He definitely was, was catching on that little red eye deal yeah, in the yeah. back of that little Black pot. and gold red eye. It's hard I just, to beat. Yeah, yeah, I just remember that he uh, – I remember him, his truly, his hair being on point. Like, I remember that. Uh, it was yeah. so cold, and he's just, like, firing away. And the hair yeah. is just yeah. perfect back there one morning. Uh, like 30 degrees, no toboggan. But, but saying that, though, dude, for me as a kid – he was always like that super clean cut. Yeah. Pros he, he was pro. The he like was he, the guy. He owned, yeah. When he walked in a room, he owned it. That's right. And yeah. he still does. Like oh, you go for to a sure. Classic, I mean, he is a machine. For sure. I got to spend some time with him, I guess, at last year's Classic. No, take that back. It was the uh, Fort Worth Classic. And he had just won at Chick and VPT. And he stayed in the TH booth with me for about an hour. And it's always, even though like we get a little jaded, because we're fortunate to know these guys and, and call a lot of them friends, you know. I wouldn't necessarily call Kevin a, a you know a close friend or anything, but just a business acquaintance. I've known yeah. him for a very long time. But you kind of get taken aback. I, I've said it even like having Jimmy Houston on here and Larry Nixon on here. These are just heroes of my childhood that I do consider friends now. And we get a little jaded, but but with Kevin, there's always just that little bit of like I'm like a 12 year old when he gets around because you listen to everything he's he's got going on. And you talk about a guy that has morphed, though, because he didn't have to do social media, man. He didn't have to do any of that. The guy's career's made. He's running around with teams of people filming and getting content. Like, he's a pro. And when you say action, that dude is a one-taker. Hey, what's this part? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Boom. He goes. He is the pro's pro, man. It's He's, uh, he's on a different level on and off the wall. Yes. It's, like, it's not just – Fishing wise, like business wise, he's on a whole other level. That's I've noticed fact. that a lot just spending yeah. time with him in, in booths at Strike King and lose. And I mean, he's just, I mean, he's just the guy, you know. It, he is, just, man. And it I, is what it is. And a team like his wife, Sherry, his Absolutely. boys, like his boys are now helping out a lot too. And he just, uh, they're, a, they're a powerhouse, man. Yeah. And they always have been. And, uh, and the guy is, uh, this sport, in my opinion, would be smaller 
had he not been in it and been as dominant. Every yeah. sport has to have that Tiger Woods, that Michael Jordan, that LeBron. And the argument of who's going to be. Yes, of course. Every like somebody has it. to say, because up until him, you know, it was Rick Klein and KVD. Right. And now it's KVD and Wheeler. And now somebody's got to take that place, you know, and it may be it's somebody coming. watching right Maybe now. you. No, I don't know about that. That's a little Maybe. stretch, but – uh, but I mean, there is there's a kid out there right now that that's dominating local events that we don't you know somebody's going to have to take that place one day, and it, right. it's no different than any argument. LeBron James and Michael Jordan. I mean, you know, Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. I mean, it's a it's a never ending like somebody has to set set that standard for somebody else to chase, and he no doubt did it. Oh man, I'm talking about just just the bar was laid yeah. down and. Uh, the only and, – and this is no shade whatsoever at Major League Fishing. I just wish he had one more classic in him. I do. I just I do wish too. he had one more classic in him. I just wish that this announcement on the classic stage would have been, again, not a shot at Redcrest, not a shot at MLF at all, uh, and Van Damme part owner in MLF. Like, he, yeah. he was all about that move and, and everything they have going on obviously from the jump he fished his very first like the ones that were on tv way back when he was on the very first group of like 20 people like he's all about that organization but i just feel like it would have been so cool just for the emotion of it right like an arena full of folks just pumped uh about his career so shout out to kevin he is uh He's he's something, man, and I and I he's not going away. No, he's not uh, retired. He's, not he's just away. changing up a little bit. I think. I yeah, think I think you'll see a more TV stuff out of him. You'll see. I, and I said for years he will become Bill Dance. Yeah, right. I, I think his own running on his own schedule yes. has become a priority. I mean, he's getting you know he's getting to the age where you know he's. I mean, he's probably wore out. Oh, dude, I mean, he goes hard. Right, and he he's hard. and he's on a whole other level of everybody else too. So I mean, what it takes to wear him out it would wouldn't take half of that to get somebody else for that's out. a fact i mean he's just all the time um but you know i mean he's wanting to enjoy life and what i what i'm really interested in and and i talked about this yesterday with a buddy on the phone is there's a lot of guys that have very very successful careers and have had good careers that are in that same kind of age group like we're kind of some of the ogs and i kind of wonder if that's going to start like the push of several guys kind of starting the the process of changing up their their competitive careers and shifting more you know into something that they can schedule a little bit more on their own whether it be filming appearances and stuff like that i'm kind of wondering if it's going to start kind of a domino effect in in a few people it's almost got to happen right like you it has to like i mean nobody's got that kind of energy in them right. forever. Um, but, I mean, look, man, Kevin, still competitive, still winning. He won, yeah. you know, a BPT event in the last two years. Uh, Rick Klun won an elite in recent years. He's still doing it. He's still out there practicing, giving it hell. But you just wonder. Paul Elias, another guy, man. Paul's yeah. been around forever, won a classic in the 80s. He could be – dude, did you see he – uh he caught him up in the freaking FLW Invitational last week down at Okeechobee. Dropped like twenty five on him on day oh, yeah. two. I mean, like Paul can catch him. Yep. I mean, he he is. But for me, I don't want to do it forever. Yeah. Like I don't want to. Fi- I don't want. I mean, I want to fish till the day they put me in the dirt. But I don't want to work forever. Like you have to have a, yep. a a goal. And unfortunately, though, in this line of work, and you know this, it's hard to get that nest egg. It's hard to. I mean, you you see guys like Swindle. You know, I think Gerald's a guy that's getting to that age where he's starting to think about priorities more so, but at the same time, he's like, you can't turn the competitive fire off for those right. guys. That's where they just stick around forever. And one thing, too, is, I mean, any sport, really, is, and bass fishing is, too, and it's a little different in bass fishing because I think you can prolong it age-wise a little more than any sport. But, man, you see so many people run like, their credibility and their career down into the ground by trying to fight too long yeah. and not know when it's like time to walk away and change it up and take a break. I mean, you look at, at football players that play and play and play until they get to a certain age where it's just like, you know, they're, they're remembered more for like their downfall than their peak. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And, and unfortunate. I mean, it's just what it is, but 
I mean, he's not he's not walking away like entirely. I mean, there is he he can't. I I I do not think he can make it like two years without fishing some kind of tournament. I was gonna say whether it be we, Toyotas or what. Well, we start you start talking about like Elite Series legend exemption start type stuff. Hey, my computer over there, my work computer's dinging. Uh, we'll ignore that for yeah, now. Yeah, we'll ignore that. <laughs> what? Uh, how does that go? Right? Does he just decide? Okay, it's like Brady. Brady says, "I'm done." Thank every, you know, thanks for coming. Yeah. Tip your waitress, and he's like, "And I'm back." I know. And then he's like, "And I'm done." So yeah. Michael Jordan did the same. Those guys, like, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a very common thing. Does um, he get it home? Does he? He's sitting there watching Zona at the classic. He's like, uh, I don't think he's done with the classic. Oh, I, I really gosh. do not think he's done. I think I just don't think he can fight the bug. It's a tough one to shake, especially. And I say winner. I say that totally respectfully. I just I just out of total respect, I have seen what he's capable of, his mentality, and I just I would be shocked if he can like like make it not want to just chase get out. Yeah, classic. just get out and be done with it. I, I mean, I. I'd like to see it. Oh, I'm I mean, I'd love it. to see it. I'm here for I it. I mean, you know, and I, I don't know what he'd think about a total exemption and all that, but, man, like, when you actually – You don't like, think like, Bass would be like – When you go sit in that arena, uh, they're like, guys, guys, guess who just called? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, there's kind of you know he's a, a part owner of MLF, yeah, and all that. So I mean, I don't know how but, that goes. But Chase but, Anderson's hey. like, but, it's uh, a f- yeah. boys, f- alarm, f- fire drill. <laughs> this is on the phone. F- <laughs> there would be any just like this. They're like, take the contract, <laughs> get back here. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly how that would look. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if it'd mean going through the elite series or fishing one division of opens and just trying. Man, I just don't think somebody that, that has seen what that classic can do. I just, I have such a hard time believing somebody could just walk away. Just go off into the sun. I mean, I, if, if somebody has never sat in that arena and watched, like that Jason Christie win, oh, I mean, yeah. it was, I wasn't even there. And I mean, just watching it through the, the TV at home, I mean, just. Like it, just seeing someone's life change that quick, and and just the energy in that room, like it makes it easy to get up in the morning when it's raining sideways at four a.m. Yeah. and you gotta go practice. I, I mean, it. I mean it, it's, I mean it's a bug you can't shake. No doubt, dude. But let's talk. Let's talk know. about a bug you can't shake. Let's talk some Sammy George. I threw my notebook over there. I had some little bitty notes, but that was my contract representation. Yeah. Bass throwing KVD a legend exemption I wonder, was, I wonder if it was signed by the time it hit the ground. <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> they would have signed it in blood. Yeah. Um, in any tournament organization. Listen, he calls up MPFL. They're going to be like, give him a uh, private jet. <laughs> Get him here. I want to see him in one more classic. No doubt. Bad. It would be It would be awesome. It would be awesome. So, we did a, we did a pod last fall after all the changes came out. You were uh, – you were against the working man comments to a certain extent because you are a working man and you are out here trying to uh, trying to get to the elite man and you've missed it what two three times narrowly like I, I, don't, quit, I know I quit I know. counting but but you've been just right there on the cusp of it now we got nine you got to go all in to get in you got nine events you got to be in the top nine a hundred and how many. <sighs> Too many, like eighty, I think. <laughs> One, eight, like it's wild. Dude, a lot. It's wild. Like, just because it's nine spots is not gonna make it any. Easy. Everybody's like, oh, they want to change it because it'll be easier. Dude, if anything, it just got harder. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, that list just looking at it, there's about four or five spots that are probably already taken. I would say so. At least I would say so. So at the end of the day, we're still, you know, you're fishing for three or four spots. But mm-hmm. you did say on the show, and I've said this multiple times, and I do believe this: it is easier to make it through nine. You were yeah. allowed some slip ups, yeah. Versus the three, you gotta be balling out top tens, right. top fifteens. If you're gonna, if you were gonna make it through the three, when it was that format, yeah. it eliminates a lot of that luck fact yes i mean three events and it and it that ball can go either way i mean it can play totally into your hand it can to- totally go against you on three events you can have i mean 
you can have the luckiest thing in the world happen to you two events in a row and you just slide by that third one and make it and you're not ready. And then you have, you know, and, and you can be on the other side of it where you have something just bad happen. Like it can be something as simple as come around a corner too late, you know, your, your clock ain't right or something. You're two minutes late, cost you two pounds. And I mean, even a dead fish, I, I missed it one year because of a four ounce dead fish penalty Oof. in New York. Oof. And that's not the first time I've heard of that happen. I mean, I had three see, dead dead fish one year in, in New York just from beating their brains in. And, and, six and that's where away. you got to believe in the process and believe in all that. But but it's it, when it's your time, it's your time. We see that all, all, all the time in the sport. But damn, your entire career. Think about this, people. When you're, when you're sitting there pounding the keyboard or you're thinking you want to do this, one fish that dies in six foot swells, four ounce penalty. And you could say, well, he needs to take better care of his fish. But like nobody takes better care of them than Sammy. But that was with pool noodles. Yeah. Pool noodles, <laughs> G juice, the whole nine. And that cost him right now. He would, he would be at Okeechobee. Yep. He would be at Okeechobee right now. Well, uh, and it can go either way, you know, and it, you know, I think some things have a lot of things happen for a reason. And it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's – things line up, I believe, the way they're supposed to, so I don't really have that much bad blood. But God at the time trying to swallow that pill. Well, and you know then you mean? got kind of – and the Bass changed this rule, so shout out to them for doing that, but it's the mm -hmm. Sam George rule. Uh, yeah, it was that, last year. That helped David Gaston this year, so – yeah, I, I told him he owes me one a little bit on it, that one. It did help him, right? Yeah, yeah he wouldn't have got in. Uh, yeah. uh, but Sam competed in the overalls, and when there was a tiebreaker, it went to the individual division, and one of the Japanese guys, I forget who it was, beat you out because of that rule, and then he didn't was, even make it through the entire season. Right. It <laughs> was the double qualification at that time. If you double qualified, they went back to a single division instead of the overall division, and – you know, I'll give it to Bass, and, and I mean, I'll be the first to say, and they will too, we haven't always seen eye to eye, but I, I do respect them, and I feel like the, the people there that I talk with, they respect my opinion, and we've had some some arguments, some heated discussions. <laughs> Come and, to and, Jesus and, moments. I'm and sure. they've told me why they can't do something, and, I, and we just agree to disagree and go on, but they listen. And, you know, when that happened, you know, I had a, a really uh, deep conversation a little heated <laughs> and uh shout out know, chris bows for taking and, that ass chewing well i wouldn't say a chewing <laughs> but uh i didn't i didn't realize i had a hot mic going back to the studio when we had that discussion <laughs> so they got they got to hear it but you know and I, I brought some things up and it wasn't just because of me it was for, for seeing things in the future you know like for example the way our schedule lined up i mean you were able to be like that that last tournament or whatever uh it, basically however the the schedule lined up i mean like we had if if you were fishing all nine uh i mean we had like three weeks in a row we were gone mm -hmm. and then you have to show up and try to fish like a tournament where people have been there for three weeks yeah it's tough and then they make it or they finish fourth on that cut line in that single division while you're out in the middle of lake ontario trying to get back they're out there sinking brush and and they, that like you know it was kind of a a, a thing where you know, you were a little more committed, and when you signed up, I mean, you're all over the country, and there's no such thing as pre-practice. Yeah. You know, when, when somebody was fishing a single division, you had the ability to, you know, spend time in, in areas, and it's no hate to the, to the guy that, that did that or anything. I mean, he, you know, like, it worked out, you know? Yeah, it, no it's doubt. Just how it the rule, rules are rules. I actually think it was Webster, and I love Webster, you know, and, oh, yeah. and it has nothing to do with him. It has nothing to do with him that, that got that spot. Um, but, you know, I, I just felt that at that time it was a little, I felt a little wrong by it, to be yeah. honest with you. And, uh, you know, and I told him that and, you know, we, they went and we had a lot of phone or we had two or three phone calls discussing that. And, you know, the next year the rule was changed. And, and I think that if you had asked, you know, until the points were on the line and people were going to see how they stood with it. Um, but if you had, had brought that up at the beginning of the year, and we did, uh, several of us brought it to their attention before the first event, but, you know, sign-ups had already happened, so they can't really backtrack. Um, I mean, 90% of the guys agreed that it should be how the new rule is. Yeah, um, or was last was. year, because now it's just nine overall. Yeah, so – 
you know, and, and props to Bass. Like, I mean, they, they, you know, we don't always agree on things, but they listen. I mean, if, if nobody, I, we see it too much in our industry, um, really everywhere, whether it be a league, uh, any kind of organization. I mean, even, I mean, you could see it at local trails. I mean, or even sponsors, like when, when you see something that, that, isn't right so many people just sit back and take it like they don't assume it can't be changed i mean it's yeah. not ever going to change if you don't bring it up like the reason you know the reason sponsors pay us you know aren't just to sell products it's, it's to give them feedback and so many people get something from a sponsor and don't like it and they just keep their mouth shut and roll that's on right. I mean, that's right like you know when, when you don't like something you need to speak up or it will never ever change and everybody will sit back and complain and nobody will ever say anything. Hey, this so. guy right here, this podcast, that's what it's about. Oh, yeah. People at Ruffles Feathers at times over the years, but it's like, it's not necessarily because I think I'm right. We've had this discussion, but you have to make those opinions known. And I feel like I try to have a platform for guys such as yourself or guys on, you know, the former FLW tour guys or Bassmaster yeah. Elite or BPT guys to have a platform to talk about What's going on? Because look, ultimately these organizations are they're they're a business, yep. right? And they're gonna at the end of the day decide what's best for that business. But the anglers, as long as we are paying entry fees, are customers. Yep. We are customers. So that has to be taken into consideration. They have gotten a lot better about that over the last, I would say, five, six, seven years. For sure. I um, and I do think with the Opens, I applaud them, the direction they're headed. Because, look, I've said it on this, and we don't have to beat a dead horse, but if you aren't ready for nine Opens, you're damn sure not ready for the Elite Series. Exactly. Those boys are going to break it off, yeah. something proper for you. Well, it, you know, it's it's a little more, you know, obviously to, to go fish all nine, it's a lot more than to go fish all three and the elite series is way more expensive. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know, it, it's going to give you, it's already like I've seen it, you know, already this year, it's, uh, it's been being covered so much more. It's a lot yes. easier to sell. Yes. For example, it, you know, I've got to do a, a thing later on with Bassmaster radio. Like, I mean, it's, you've, it's already gotten more attention. Yes, it's for sure. a lot easier you know, uh, from a number standpoint and just how much they're actually promoting it. Like it's a lot easier to sell, you know, the amount you need to fish nine than it was to fish one, in my opinion, from what I've seen over the last two to three months. Um, and yeah. that, you know, some people may not agree with it, but just personally and de business dealings and things and, and, and just kind of, you know, tracking the numbers on it. Like, I mean, it, it's been a little easier and a little more, kind of justifiable for a company to spend money with you because yeah i agree they know you're not here to just you know show up fish three events and, and wear a jersey call yourself a pro right and you're and trying I, to do this forever yeah and and i really think too and and this is something you know i i've kind of mentioned with bass is, is i really think that so many people are getting involved with all nine i think that i mean we're gonna see enough changes in the next year or two where you can like make a really sustainable income with it with them through the open i think so and and guys are i mean i've i've done it for two years now and it helped fishing the tour you know getting enough sponsor money and recognition there and you know that helped help that uh kind of counter you know like lower lower payouts and stuff but i mean there's so much you know uh, participation now the payouts have gotten okay not where we wish they were but you know i think that there's enough people you know with 100 and what 75 80 guys i mean i think that they're gonna realize like we've got a a lot of people here and we could really do something special to you know kind of help them sustain a livable income paychecks you know kind of like change payouts and things where like, it's going to be the place to be, you know. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. And I think that's where Bass has got to head with those Opens because only nine getting in at a time, right? It's a lot like uh, I've said with BPT having 80. They changed up the Invitationals a lot. Then they got that Toyota Series. Like, you got to have a landing spot yeah. for guys that aren't at the Elite Series because we do have a lot of people that are talented anglers, that are great personalities, that are – great on social media that are great teachers, great, you know, uh, great representation for the sport, great representatives, and they need a home. And I think that's why MPFL is important. That's why I think all these things, uh, people are craving that content. They're craving 
to watch live bass fishing. You and I, were, we had BPT pulled up earlier. Yes, by the way, recording this a little early because I've got to go out of town. I meant to say that at the beginning of the show. Triple Threat and I are actually going, uh, i got to go to the Miami Boat Show this week. And then, uh, let's say this week. As you're listening, it would have been last week. But had to go, uh, so I'll, I'll be out of town through the weekend. And we're going down to the Keys for a couple days. I'll be at Ufala. Damn, that's coming, right? Yep, my leave Friday for it. What day is that? The 24th? What yeah, day? I think so. Yeah, at the end of this week yep. as folks are listening to this. So coming up on this first open, you only get five days now, right? Right. Five days. Right. That's going to equal some playing field out, don't you think? For yeah, a lot of I think so. It's going to be kind of weird, though, because the off limits are weird. And I, I, I'm going to say this because I'm still not 100. I, I got to look at the rules because I'm just assuming we can't. But – from what I've been told, we can still get information during the off limits. Okay. So, and, and I understand, you know, that I wish, I wish we couldn't, but I do agree that it's almost impossible to police. It's very difficult. 25 people plus co like it's just not going to happen. It's very hard. Uh, so, but I think that the fisheries we go to will be better because they won't be pounded on for three weeks, <laughs> three weeks. And, uh, I think that, you know, having that fast-paced practice, that's what I really liked about the tour was, like, you can almost – Three days. For, yeah, I almost even – like, five's almost a little – Too much. Too much. Yeah. When um, I saw that, I was like, damn, I wish they just made it three. Yeah. And, you know, and had an off day or whatever. Right, been right. Cool. And I get, you know, you got a lot of people coming – from places I've never seen. Like, I've never seen Eufaula. And You've never been to Eufaula, Alabama? Yeah. Fun fact, too, I've never been to Okeechobee. I have fished professionally for – Never been long. to the Barn Grill. I've never been there. I've <laughs> never, never been, been to Eufaula, <laughs> and I've never been to Okeechobee. I made it two years on but tour. But you've been to, like, Falcon. You've been all over the I damn place. I had a house at Falcon, yeah. yeah. You've been all over the damn world and back, and yeah. you've never been there. Yep, never been. Uh, that, that blows my mind. Eufaula really blows my mind because yep. I feel – but, you know, other than – I fished one open there when I was like 19 and then two tour events, one as a co one as a, as a, no, did I ever fish there as a pro? Hell, I don't think I did. I know I didn't. I never fished you. I, just, pro. I mean, I don't think never, I ever, it wasn't really on our BFL schedule once I started fishing BFLs and things. So yeah, it's just never been scheduled. Same with Okeechobee. I mean, I've fished opens forever and Costa. Opens have never, never gone to Okeechobee since you've been fishing for sure. No, yeah. They never, I almost fished that one year. They had that like wild card for the classic. Yeah. 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 Um, Shout out Jimmy Mason. Yeah. Didn't Jimmy fish that? I don't know. No, he I fished a sell. wild card to get into the elites that year down there at Okeechobee. I believe Jimmy Mason caught him in that and made the elite. Yeah. I, I had think. to sell Christmas trees that week. Yeah. Yeah, the wild it card. Like, it was in like October. Or yeah, I remember that. It was something weird. Uh, wow. No Okeechobee. Or you follow. God, I said this last week, watching that invitational down there and them swim jigging them big suckers. Yeah. Braid screaming. Yeah. Give me a dose of that life. I love Okeechobee. And as you're listening to this, the Okeechobee Elite Series will have wrapped up, and I don't know who won because we're recording this early. So back-to-back uh, -back Elite Series, BPT's back, though, and, and uh, that format, dude, that format with the score tracker, we were talking about it earlier, and you were like, dude, I don't know, the strategy is crazy. Now that it's five – but, which is what the, all these guys fish for years and years and years, but you can see what everybody's got. Whoo, there's some chess going on. I mean, some chess going on. What do you think? I can see all sides. Of, I kind of like not knowing a little bit, but, man, I don't know. It really depends on the situation. I feel like bad days I do not want to know. No, I'm I do that. not want to yeah, know. If you got 25, but, you're like, yeah, I want to see where I stack up. But it's interesting because, like, you know, talking to some of the guys down there, like they they're allowed to look at they can't look at footage they can't watch live stuff they're i don't know what all they're 100 percent allowed to look at not but i just score tracker i, I know they can look at score tracker but it's interesting because of the off days like you can hear guys making decisions knowing where other anglers are yes and like areas that may have got blown out they know that you know those guys are in that area too and today they're biting a little bit and then in, oh, it, it, yeah, but it, like that happened could, with the other format too. That's just score tracker right, in general. Right, but, right. but it, it's uh, but on five man, it's, whew, it's listen. Here's where <laughs> this is where this is going to 
be seen as a negative for MLF, I believe, just from watching the, the first few days of the coverage. From a fan standpoint, that's not your hardcore fishing fan that liked the Every Fish Counted format. Mm -hmm. When dudes are out, they're just out. Yeah. So that cut line drama will be a little less. Yeah. And when a dude is blowing it out, which we already saw this with MLF some, but when a dude's blowing it out, he's like, yeah, dog, I'm not catching one today. So those second, yeah. the coverage the second day, going to be a little a little lacking at times as far as fish catches from the top guys, but knowing them, how they used to shift it around the cameras for the cut line, they'll be chasing those guys that are down there trying to make that top 20. But still, you're going to have some people pissing and moaning about that yeah. for sure. Well, it's no but different I, than any five fish derby no. right now. It's just the, the decisions you can make knowing right the then. tracker and – the cuts and yeah. how you strategically can play the cuts, the auto advance stuff like that's start the from zero thing. stuff and all that. Right, that's the only thing really any different than a regular five fish derby. Are they doing a cumulative weight? And I, I forget, I've had everybody on. Are they doing uh, a cumulative weight from the knockout round to the final round, or is it zero? It's zero knockout, I know. But then do they zero again final day? I don't think so. You think uh, you carry over I from knockout? You, I think you okay. do carry over the final day. I think. Okay. I think. I hope so. I like that. Yeah. I like that I because they have to start from scratch again on knockout round, the top 40. Yeah. But if you make that top 10, I do think if it's cool if you carry your weight yeah. over. I think the top 40 or whatever is the uh, the only one that they don't delete your weight from. Okay. okay. To my knowledge. I may yeah, be I know totally the first wrong. two days are scrapped. So, like, 25 pounds the first day. And you're like, okay, well, the cut line's at 11. I need to just catch me a, a one-pounder here yeah. and make sure that I'm secure. And then you go blast them on that knockout round day yeah. and try to win it. I like the strategy in it. I mean, it. Uh, I think that those kind of things play into, like, Wheeler's favor because he's so good at the damn game of it yeah. all, planning it. Uh, but it helps when you can catch fish at will. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was funny. I saw a meme yesterday. Somebody's like uh, – yeah, they changed the format. Let's check in on Jacob. <laughs> in like the first 30 oh, minutes, yeah, he, he was leading. He's still leading. It's <laughs> amazing. Still, still going to be angler of the year, most likely, just out there blasting. He's like, yeah, change the format. Yeah. You guys want to catch one or 100? What do you want to do? So, uh, what y'all want to do today? Yeah, what y'all want to do today? Y'all want to y'all want to limit how many hooks I can use too? Yeah. Don't <laughs> tie my hand behind my back. I, lo I love it. <laughs> I love it, man. Because, hey, that that's like you said, every sport has to have that has to have that guy, right? We've had Clun, we had Van Dam, we've got Wheeler. And I think that you got to have that bar. Oh, and, yeah. And and look, man, they're all uh, – And it's the same argument, too. Yeah, every, it is You bring it up now, argument. everybody's like, well, well, back then the technology's different. And so if you put them on a level pay playing field, both uh, in their prime and this and that. Fishy is fishy. If you're it, fishy, it, it's, it doesn't Well, matter. it's the same. It's no different than the, the LeBron James and Michael Jordan argument. Everybody's like, oh, well, he had this many all-stars and that and this and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I but dude, it's like it's an endless rabbit. Well, think hole. about like <laughs> supplements and workout oh, techniques yeah. and training, dude. Michael Jordan be out there playing around a golf, pounding beers, and then still go beat your ass yeah. in the finals. LeBron's just drinking John water David. and eating protein snacks yeah. and bathing in ice baths and all this dumb stuff. And and Michael's liable to be at the damn casino with Dennis Rodman. I mean, like that's right. the difference in that, you know. Have you seen the story? The uh, oh, what's the, what was it on Netflix or whatever for a while? Oh, uh, uh, the, the final, Jordan, the uh, the final dance or uh, last dance, last dance. I think. Yeah, dance. I've watched it twice all the way through. It's so funny the just hearing like uh, the backstories of all that. It's pretty neat. What, when he said, and then that upset me. What is it? <laughs> what was his line from that that he says in the in that. Uh, and I took that the wrong way or something. Yeah. I forget how he said but then he like went off. And oh, dude, it's great. My Hudson, my 15-year-old, is obsessed with it. We've watched it many times. I hadn't watched it in a while. I need to. Oh, that's good stuff. There's a new one on there, too. This is just really ADD, Luke. But there's a new one on there about the uh, Redeem team is what it's called. But it's about after we get our ass kicked in the Olympics in basketball for a couple years – that they put together this team that's LeBron, Kobe, oh, yeah, Carmelo, yeah, yeah. all them, but they called them the Redeem Team to try to bring, you know, United States basketball back to where it been. And then they just went over there and just just whipped ass. But because uh, they got beat, like they, yeah. they didn't win the gold medal. Uh, it's a really cool documentary. It's on Netflix too. I like uh, me some Kobe. 
Yeah, that was. Uh, I'll never forget where I was standing whenever uh, we were at a birthday party for Ryder. Whenever the news came over, he had passed away. I was at the lay-in tank at the Harris Chain. Really, my phone had like oh, 900 man. text messages about that. So crazy. My boys are just all ate up with basketball, and and uh, yeah, that was that was crazy. Hudson's I just actually, loved his like mentality, the hard oh, work, yeah. like. Man. Like he, like I, I just, I just liked how he did things. No doubt about it, man. Yeah, that that was a huge loss in my opinion because he he had a lot left to do in life to whether it's motivationally speaking or coaching or whatever. Like he was just the guy, to say the very very least. Um, so something I want to ask you about. This is a very pointed question. Maybe we get BK on the phone for this. There's a 17 pounder call out at Ivy. 1703. Have you watched the video? He has the catch on video? Yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't seen that. It's just it's an A rig. There's just hooks everywhere. There's hooks everywhere. And uh, a lot of people are like, Yeah, well a lot of people well, a lot of people are saying it's snagged on live and like here's my thing. I don't I don't I mean, whatever. Like it's a seventeen pounder. Um and that's always where this argument's gonna go. Um uh, I've been reading the comments though, and just like, all right. And I ain't trying to hate because it's a seventeen pounder. It's uh, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. I don't know. I mean, it but ain't easy to snag it, one. Hell it, no, it, dude. I've it may be bonus one. points. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you would even do it, but I'm seeing the comments, and I hate it for the dude that he's getting that kind of hate. But what my what I say that to set this up is there is so much drama. Oh, in yeah. that big bass oh, yeah. world, it's always been like that, whether it's the big swim bait world. Oh, yeah. But why? Why is there so much drama in that big bass? And there's a certain group of people that I will not name on this show because they annoy me. But they just, it's just nonstop. I am better at, than you at this and I am. It's just this talking down. And it's yeah. like this. It's a lot like the big deer world. Oh, yeah. A lot like the big deer world. If you're not shooting 200 inchers. You're looked down upon. You can get it officially scored, and there'll still be people it, come on and argue it, with exactly. you. Exactly, but dude, what is it about? And it's from people that because there are people that catch those that are haters of what's yeah. going on. That are those those are who I'm talking about. They are nonstop. It's just drama. And look, hey, I'm dramatic on this show. Professional bass fishing is dramatic. Do not get me wrong, but there is something about that big swim bait culture. Big fish culture, big deer culture, where people look down upon other. Oh, wow, you caught you a six pounder? You fing, I can't get you a six pounder out here. Dude, I'm happy to catch a six pounder. If they come do what we do, trying to catch five yeah, yeah, with the yeah, right yeah. ones, yeah. you freaking kill for a six pounder. Yeah, someday. but I love that, man. You read the comments and you're just like, oh my God. I'm happy catching some three pounders, dog. Like it's all right. I, it's fishing. Like we just sat here and you offered which lake to go to. The one with big ones or the ones we'll catch a lot. I chose a lot. Yeah, that's me. I like I like swinging the bat. I do too. I like I like okay. batting practice. But why well, I just and maybe y'all comment. I don't know why there's always this certain amount of shade. I think I think when you're good at something, there's a certain amount of ego that comes with that, obviously, and bravado. But dude, that but that world they eat each other oh, <laughs> it's yeah. like non-stop it's like it's no different than watching it's a, a impressive football game. what they do but it, damn it's no different than watching a football game in a crowded room of people like everybody in that room thinks they can do better exactly. and nobody's on the field it's the same <laughs> well, you're thing. talking about commenters i'm talking about the guys that are actually on the field that are good at it but then they're oh they, the the actual guys yeah the actual like, yeah, guys yeah, yeah. is what I think the drop where the drama lies now look then the drama lies in the fans too don't get me wrong but there's just something about, and way before like oh is it live scope oh are you snagging them all oh, that's high yeah. fence deer hunting kind of stuff you see those comments from the anti Ford facing folks but I'm talking about just like that big swim bait that dude. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. It's a bizarre like, thing. Because it, and it is bizarre now that you say that. Uh, now that I start thinking about it here, because like, like you know, when I have a question about something and I know who's really good at it, that's who I ask. Yeah, of course. Like with Aaron Martin's his jerseys right there. Like yeah. when I had a question about a drop shot, I asked him. Yeah, and he would tell and you whatever shoot he you straight. Whatever he told me is what I did. Same with a swim bait. When I have a swim bait question, I text Zal Dane. Yeah. And what he says is what I do. No doubt. Because and he's the be. best. He spent or 
He's one of the best. I would say he's the best for sure in the tournament world, applying it to tournaments. If I say the best, it will have a whole argument. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he is again drama. He's one of the best that I personally know and and talk to frequently, and, and he answers those questions. And but it's weird because all our guys, like in the tournament world, they do that with each other. When somebody has a strength, they ask and they listen. For sure. But in that world, it's almost like they argue. They do. Like, whatever you they do. whatever you do, that ain't the right way. Or it's, or it's not good enough, and then there's like, oh, well, you're coming to this lake, and none of them, here's my thing, like, none of these guys, especially in, in, in regards to Ivy, like, don't be mad that people are showing up. Right. Because it's your damn fault. Uh, you, like, you blasting it in videos. You, can, I mean, like, dude, it's your fault. There's no telling what would happen on that place if social media Oh, my That's God. That's why Falcon did what it did. Social media wasn't a thing, and you didn't know Falcon was even a place or existed until you saw it in Bassmaster Magazine three months after they had been there. And you and the difference in Ivy and Falcon is some locals at Ivy might slash your tires. Falcon, uh, slash the cartel throat. may kill you. <laughs> that is true. That's the tr- very that solid true. point by, by the lowlifer himself yep. right here. Um because we had, you know, we had some locals down there that got a little rowdy while we were there. But what's amazing is guys like Josh Jones and a lot of other guys like this Jason Kahn that caught the the seventeen pounder. Like they've moved in down there, guiding, and I guess the locals are cool with it. You know, I, I don't know because uh, you know Josh, Oklahoma boy. I think Jason's a Lake Fork guy. Yep. Um, you know, not the Lake Fork guy, but a Lake Fork guide, and eased out there and and. Uh, and look, I by no means am trying to say that Jason snagged that bass. By the way, I'm just seeing comments, and I like it sucks that it's not like a single swimmer. Yeah, I just hate the A rig argument. I and I seen, love an A rig. I have. I hadn't seen the video. Oh, they I all. Have, they all. No they idea. all. They mm. all up in it. Yeah. I mean, when it comes in the net, people are just like, well, "That was the Alabama rig, even without period." Scope. Yeah, it's I hard mean, to get. Yeah, no. I, I I actually kind of thought. And I don't know what will ever happen, but, I mean, I went a year or two recently where I really thought that we would have similar sight fishing rules uh, yeah. with live scope Dude. about being hooked in the mouth. But there's so Dude. many gray areas. I mean, Dude, I have done. you can just turn that trolling motor right when you're fixing to get a bite and be like, oh, I don't know there's one there. But wow. even then, but dude, how many of them you snagging on live? I have ever? had many. I've never, like... The one thing. or two will be like in the yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Like you're throwing a jerk bait, yeah. And I see a dot, and I'm coming up on the dot, or I'm above it, or whatever. And then I load up, and he's in the side of the face, which they do on a yeah. jerk bait when I don't see him on live scope a lot of times. Even then, he tried to eat the bait. Yeah, so I'm like, I constantly, I don't know. People are like, oh, you guys are just uneducated people. You're snagging them on live scope. Yeah. Dude, I don't know that you can do Now, look. Now, look. I will make the argument. A damn 17-pounder on live scope might look like a freaking-ass beach ball laying down there, and you might be able to snag one of them. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't With seen it. With 17 video, hooks. I, I haven't just, seen it. But this is all I'm saying is I'm fishing for two-pounders, Oh yeah. And, and I ain't ever snagged one. I've never tried, but I'm just saying, like, And I'd be think, like, damn it, that big ball of gizzard <laughs> shad down there. Gank. <laughs> dude listen listen if it ain't on a bed <laughs> bring it the thunder it's just free game <laughs> it's free game yeah i don't know but you're right i don't know will, will the organizations do something about that at some point i just don't feel like it's a widespread thing like i don't feel like people are that dialed with live scope that they out here snagging them right. in the tails and sides and well, and here's you the, know here's spraying the, the shit out of them. everybody everybody <laughs> Everybody, uh, spragging them. <laughs> That's what, was it fighter that said that? I spragged them. Yeah, on live. But uh, I mean, everybody wants to have that argument, and I mean, at the end of the day, the same guys that caught them before live scope catch them with live scope. That's right. I mean, Wheeler didn't just show up like no. yesterday with live scope and just yeah. start with. I mean, he's whipping everybody forever. I mean, totally. It, uh, I mean, every, every like, big name in tournament fishing, none of them just, like, magically start. Patrick Walters was catching them way, way before, before live scope. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you know. And then he just upped his game, like, substantially yeah. with live scope. And I, I understand, you know, I mean, I, I understand, like, the whole fan interaction and stuff on live cameras with the live scope. Yeah, yeah. Live, you know, there's not as much talking and stuff. I get that. Well, know, and but. I think for a, for a price range from your normal – look, a lot of guys that comment on fishing on Facebook, and this is no offense to them whatsoever, they're, they're fishing from the bank, right? Yeah. Or they're fishing from a kayak or they're fishing from a smaller boat. And – the thought of spending five grand upgrading electron, that's a, yep. that's a big thought. They, they can't physically make that happen. And so I think a lot of the comments you see are from that place of jealousy and anger yep. of, of not being able to do that. Um, look, dude, I said it last week. Bass fishing to me is flipping bushes at Decatur yep. on the Decatur Flats. Bass fishing to me is winding around in some reeds and some hay fields at Okeechobee a freaking big easy one blowing up on it throwing a buzzer down a bank like that's bass fishing to me that's how i grew up yeah but this is also bass fishing and it's taking its place you you have been i will say forward facing sonar like the very first pan optics i'll never forget you called them at douglas i'll never forget it how long ago was that it was in 16 and so seven years ago i missed that i miss being on the front end of all that by light, like it never clicked in my head. Let's go look for little dots all the trail. time, all right. just all the time. Never do anything that else by that much. And he had the old antiquated, you yeah. know. I got it because uh, I saw it in the classic with uh, when we were working on Hackney's boat. He yeah, was talking that's about right. it in the boat yard when it was like that's right. eight degrees. That was before in Tulsa. Yeah, yep. yep. that was before I had it and uh, before I was with Garmin. I got with Garmin in 17, so I've been with him six years, and I had it. And even me then, this is what's funny, one of the lakes that I fish here local a lot, I would blast them on that stupid thing. Like one month out of the year, they'd be out there suspended under shad, and I'd be like, oh, this is fun. And then I would just be like, let's go flip bushes. I I would just, with old, you know, and I could... We we didn't know what they did back then. No, and I just, until, and then, but dude, the curve with me, and I've talked about this on here a bunch, I had one of the first five, yes, you heard it here, folks, first five live scope units that the Garmin Pro Staff had. I had it before it got released to the media because I had to do <laughs> the media event at ICAST. They put it on my boat. This is no joke. This is how dumb I am. They put it on my boat. Big Daryl, shout out to Daryl from Garmin. Put it on my boat on the off day for the final event of the 2018 season when we were at St. Clair. I don't think you were fishing that year. Listen to me. You had it at St. Clair? Listen to me. Put it on at, like, lunch, okay? We dumped the boat in there at Metro. He goes, yeah, it does this and that. Okay, yeah. Dude, I don't know what I'm looking at. It might as well be Tetris. (laughs) Like, I don't know. I've had zero experience. I don't even know what it does. All I know is I'm good at running my mouth, and I get to take riders out with it and do some film work at ICAST a month from then. I had been invited to that. It was like me, Scott Martin, Stetson Blaylock, MDJ, and Ruben Bannis, five of us that had the damn thing, right? Oh, Before wow. anybody had that's, it on my That's the place to have it, too. Yes. And, dude, so I had it. To a point that I had one of the first ones, I had to take it off of my boat before I sold my boat that fall to put it on my next boat because they didn't have any of them. Yeah. Like, I had this technology long before anybody. So, I'll never forget, first day at St. Clair, dude, listen, Daryl had done some settings. What I'm, I had pulled up on this place, me and Matt Airy were sharing. We're rub rail to rub rail. Dude, it just... just shit everywhere on my screen. <laughs> like, I don't know, and it's kind of bumpy that first day. I still don't know what I'm looking at. I turned it off. <laughs> oh, my God. You heard it here, folks. I turned off my lights. I was like, damn, I, this is making my eyes cross. I got to turn this thing off so I can get home and figure this out. Then I came home, though, that summer, and one of my little lakes that I love up here where they suspend a ton just blasted them. And I was like, you moron. You moron, dude. We were catching them on big spoons, catching we, them deep crank. It was incredible. We didn't realize how nomadic bass were. Yeah, them. man. You know, like yeah. like my the the first experience I had, it it was panoptics. Live yeah, scope yeah. wasn't the blob. It, the blob. It, bleh, yeah. bleh. And you could kind of see some stuff, but only out to to like 30 or 40 feet. And I wrecked them up north on it. But the first experience I had with it, uh, we were at Douglas for an open. Yeah. And uh, I'd been catching them in the cranking. summer, right? 
yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd made the final day. I'd been catching a crank in a 10 XT. And, uh, anyways, we, I mean, we ain't got like 10, 15 minutes left on the final day. And I've still got, you know, a little one in the box. So I'm sitting on the end of a point winding and winding and winding. And the school's kind of moved off of it because we've blasted a million of them. And I look out, there's a dot sitting by itself, like 20 foot down over like 65 feet. And I'm like, man, that sure looks like he'd come out of that school over there. And uh, I looked at him. He's still sitting. I mean, this goes on for like two minutes. I bend over and pick up a flutter spoon, and I pitch it over there. And, you know, back then, like, your spoon would fall like five feet before it ever caught Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it starts falling. At about that time, I see that dot start moving <laughs> up. And I went, I was like, that's kind of neat. I mean, this was the first tournament I had it. And, I mean, the dots get, it's like still 10 foot below it. And all of a sudden, my line jumps, like, three foot up in there <laughs> Doom! like i still got the spool open and i click it and i swing and it doesn't move i thought it was a strapper and it was like a six and a half pounder had it down his throat and it never once clicked in my head like we gotta be doing this maybe we should go out over there and do it some more but i mean we didn't have enough time in that event it's at the end of the day day three yeah, it, right? was, yeah. it was the very end of the tournament but i never once was like maybe i should go do this at home Maybe I should throw at the dots I see out there over 100 feet of water. I think it was that same year. I know it was. We were at Beaver. That was my rookie year on tour, and I didn't have it. And I was rooming with Gagliardi. And he's like, uh, hey, man, you want to throw around some of these boat docks? You can get a limit of spots pretty quick. They're suspended on these cables. And I'm like, oh, man. So listen, <laughs> I'm like, dun, 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 like winding my crap around, like, eh, okay. And he's throwing a little Kitek. And I'm like, dude, how do you know that there? He goes, oh, I got this pan optics. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, you can see them. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, you can see your bait. I can see. I'm like, you can see a 2 8 Kitek. Yeah. And dude makes the cut in the tournament oh, doing yeah. that. He's probably the only one in the event doing it. Of course, Gagliardi was always on the front edge. Like, he oh, was yeah. the first ever guy to ever show me side imaging uh, in February of 2007. No, 2006. He won a FLW. I'll never forget. Um, I just started TH 2006. Started TH in August 2005, and I was traveling through his area, Columbia, South Carolina, and the FLW was coming up in like two weeks on his home pond. And I was actually staying with him and his dad, Big G, and he goes, uh, dude, you ever seen the side imaging? <laughs> Tom and Bert, seriously. And there were like three people that had it there. Oh, yeah. And he goes, uh, when you get through working, I was calling on boat dealers for TH. He goes, you get through working this afternoon, we'll go out. It's going to be nice that afternoon, and I could be on the water with it. Yeah, yeah. Before the cutoff or whatever. And he goes, I'll take you out here. So, dude, we pull up on this island, which, by the way, is where he ended up winning the FLW Tour on this spot. <laughs> and he rides by, and I'm like all but sitting in his lap, like you do. And he's like, yeah, you see that? It's all bass. And, dude... That was, when it looked like, oh, that was probably but, when they looked like dude, I think they Egyptian talk, hieroglyphics uh, uh, on side yeah, images. Yeah. Well, dude, I think I think somebody weighed like 40 pounds that week in a tournament, too. Yeah. Uh, Tim Carroll, I believe, from Oklahoma, weighed like 40 on them, or like 38. Like, dude, Murray was as good, which Murray's on fire right now, but Murray was as good as it had ever been. Yeah. Dude, we roll by, and he's like, all of the, those bulls golf balls, we'll it's all that. bass. And I'm like, Really? <laughs> and he says, yeah. You want to see him? And I'm like, yeah. Dude, we stand up, and his dad was in the boat. I swear to God, we caught two sevens and a five, buddy. And I was like, what just freaking happened? And and I'm like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't throw – when's the tournament? He's like, yeah, two weeks away or whatever. He's, Yeah, I wouldn't cast on that again. And honest to God, he ends up winning off of that spot. Well, we caught three freaking just donkeys. But he's like – we were out when we went out for like two hours, but he's like, Yeah, you see all that. But so he was always on that cusp. And so when he's telling me about this pan optics deal, I started emailing Garmin like that night. <laughs> I was like, Hey, y'all got any more of them pan optics? And then I had it in 17 and didn't utilize it at all. Yeah. Like I needed to. And then in 18, the original pan optics, we were at Lanier, and there's this deal on the marinas over there that I figured out. It's pre-spawn, and dude, I've been throwing my shaky head. Little, my little buddy, Michael Brewer, our buddy. Michael's practicing with him as a co-angler. And I got to catch him on his shaky head, and dude, you pull up. And I could tell you within like 
three seconds if I was going to get a bite or not once I got dialed on it. But there'd just be these just, they just look like just these little blobs just moving yeah. around all slow, Atari looking now compared to LiveScope. Dude, you'd bump yeah, me. we used to call them, we used to say, oh, there's something behind my bait. Now it's like, oh, no, that's a carp. No, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. catfish. That's, oh, right. that, that's a bass. And, dude, listen, this old, you throw your shake head in there and then blobs will go, brick, 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 oh, yeah. brick, brick. They start making the way up and that line will go, boom. Dude, you'd catch big spots. And I caught them that week in that tournament over there off of that. And that was the first time I was like, oh, I got to start using this more. And I came home and I started bowl. utilizing it. Yeah. But still, when I got live scope, I was like, what is this? What is this yeah. garbage? I don't know what this is. I had to tell that one on myself. Had live scope, turned it off before anybody else at St. Clair and oh. finished about 100th in that tournament after catching almost 18 the first day and was like 70th place. And then, dude, they, they railed on them. Over there, and nobody. Now, to be fair, it was still you could just drift St. Clair and catch him. BK yeah. almost won. He had almost yeah. 100 pounds of small. He, he swears if he'd have had it, like oh, there's no telling. He, had, I think he actually had it. No, he didn't either. I'm telling you, I was one of five people uh, in the country that had it then, and he was with Garmin anymore. Huh. I remember pulling back up, and yeah. it was like me, Gagliardi, and Sug staying together, and I'm like. Hey, look at this thing Daryl just put on my boat. And they're like, oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That's the one where he said if he had had it, he'd, have, been he'd have blown them. Oh, yeah. Ain't water. no telling. Which they were, they were, everybody would have, too. But Yeah, yeah that's know, right. We uh, That's one of the places where, like, like you want to have it. Like, Anymore, especially. Yeah. You better have it. Like, you have to have it. Absolutely to have to have it. All right, before we, uh, before we wind down, because I'm ready to go catch a bass. Yep. Before we wind down. You got some big news. Are we ready to publicly say anything about your news in life? Which news? Because I already publicly said some news. Family news. Oh, that's out there. Okay, I didn't know yeah. we. I didn't know we were Instagramming that or anything. Yeah, yet. you want to say it? Yeah, let's go. You Sa- say it. Sammy's gonna be a daddy. Yeah. Sammy's going. Sammy's gonna have a. We, do we know yet? It's a we, girl. A little, okay. It's a girl. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, my wife's having a baby. I mean, I'm assuming it's mine since, you know, we're married. But, I mean, I've been around the house for, like, since July, listen, so, I mean. Listen. Trey Swindle sat right there, and one of his girlfriends <laughs> broke up with him over some shit he said on here. Are you serious? You're going to get a divorce <laughs> over low-budget life. Nah, it should be, be our right. first divorce, so she, bad. Miss Savannah, we love you. She knows I And uh, we're proud. Listen, Marissa has got baby fever, oh. and we're older, and so there will be no more babies at the Low Budget Live Bar and Grill until we have grandkids one hey. of these days. But she is ready to get her hands on a little George baby. Everything I that have is for weird. sale for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, I'm you just keep, kidding. You keep your Christmas tree seed away kidding. from my family, boy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, congrats, buddy. That that will uh, when is the due date? Uh, August second. It's actually funny because I talked to John Garrett yesterday. He ha- it, they have one. Uh, their baby is due August sixth. Oh, really? And we're we are both God. in New York like that week before. So we're <laughs> baby pattern though, man. Look yeah. at Polinick. Look at look at a lot of these guys. Yeah. Nobody better sneeze too hard that week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping the baby pattern's true. I mean, we've seen it. It's one classics. It's one AOI. That's right. I mean, it's your year, buddy. You gonna be in that top nine? I think we go to the classic this year. I think this is it. This is it for you. you we go so? to the classic. Which one? I'm gonna say. Dude, I want to say I'm going to say a rando because I don't think I think it's going to be in Oklahoma. I don't think because you are small, you are as dialed with those northern smallmouths as anybody I know. I don't think that's where it happens. I think it's going to happen somewhere you least expect it because you're also really good at junking around. And I think somewhere like that, you fall Oklahoma event or a Toledo Bend, which by the way they call a 15 pounder and a 13 pounder there in the last couple. Yeah, of like, that one's going. That's that one's going to be interesting. That's going to be like an April. Or they going to be biting. That one's going to be fun, man. Yeah, I hate that I'm going to miss that one for I sure. Don't know. I don't know if you've may, been close. It, it, dude. May, it may never happen, but I'd like it to. You know, if you could pick one that you think it could happen, where would that be? Mm. And I know I just put you on the spot with the up north thing, but oh man, I'm trying to remember our schedule. Our schedule's so like all over the place. Yeah, man, I don't know. Every time I pick one, I, it'd be bad. 
I think I think if it did happen, I think it, it would be a rando, man. Like, I've had so many people be like, Wheeler, Wheeler, Wheeler. Man, I'm telling you, like, that event is not going to set up like people think think it's going to. Like, all the people that fish that, like, all the I time. I about that. I didn't want to put any pressure on you. No, I, and, you know, I've had so many phone calls about that one. Like, oh, you're excited about Wheeler. And I, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. But man, that lake does not fish the same as it normally does with 200 people. No. All them people that you know they, they're going to help people and this and that and you know fish events there every weekend like it is not going to fish the same with 200 fish is small anyways yes i think that it time is again. not going to be the same with 200 but i don't think you can do the same thing over and over i think you have to junk around and and that may be a good thing it may be a bad thing but i'm i'm a little nervous about that one just because of I mean, man, I just hadn't fished a big event there in a long time. Hasn't been a big event so, there. Right. In a while. It's the first one in a while. And I, I think people will be really surprised that I think the weights won't be as good as people expect. And I think that it'll be like, it'll be a lot harder to get a bite just simply because of, of pressure. I think the lake will be good, but I think that pressure is going to. By day two, it'll start to kind right. of show its I colors. think by day three or four of practice, it'll start showing. Okay. Um, um, and there's a really, really good chance in that event that it'll be over and done with in the first 30 minutes. It's on true. Chad's farm. I mean, it's just a Tennessee river. I mean, it's, yeah, that's true. So scary. And if you ain't on that, the right deal and can't get on it because of a boat or something, you could be junking around for nine pounds, you know, and, and that's just a, the fact of, of the matter. But no, man, I, I'd like for it to be a random one. I really wish I, I would love for, if I could pick one, for it for like a first big win like that happened i would love for it to be wheeler just because oh my gosh like, like i started my you know like what we talked about with van dam earlier that was the one that got me started and you know go from fishing local events to winning a big event to starting your career there and then being able to win it with like your family and baby on the way it'd be just kind of like a full oh man we throw a damn party if, yeah if you... it'd be it'd be fun i'd like it to be that but Man, it, it's so hard to win on your local lake. I mean, it's so Especially hard. with 225. Right. Now, really sneaky places like, you know, fork and thing, just really hard conditions, and you can find really sneaky stuff. I think it's a, a – I wouldn't say easier, but it's a, a little more likely. But, man, we just – we don't have a lot of secrets anymore. No, I would agree here. with that. Um, so, I'd like it to be there, but – I don't really care where it is. At the end of the day, you send end up you, at the classic. I was going to say, send you to the classic, send some money to your bank account, yep. get you some Elite Series yep. points, baby. Let's go. I'm uh, I'm all for the classic. I don't even really care about the money as much as I do that classic. I want to be on. I want to stand on the classic buddy. stage. Sammy George, I appreciate you coming and stopping by the Low Budget Bar and Grill. Finally, I've enjoyed let's go, it. Let's go try to catch a bass, y'all. Be sure to follow Sam on all of his social media platforms. I don't, I don't think he has an OnlyFans anymore. He cut it off, so he can't. Uh, if I don't catch him, I might have to get it back. Feetfinder.com. Sam yeah. George, appreciate you, little buddy. You're the man. Low Budget Live. Thank y'all each and every one for tuning in every single week, week in and week out. I'm going to take you out with some Biloxi Blues, and we're going to be back sooner than later with a new look around here, but uh, in the next couple of weeks, looking forward to it. Thank y'all. Working on the classic live party put some big steps forward on that thing this week and uh, just waiting to hear back on a deal and then we're going to start making some announcements all right i know y'all keep messaging me and i appreciate each and every one of y'all for doing that we're going to see y'all up there on rocky top here's some biloxi blues and i'll see y'all next week on the two below i never could make it last spanish moss and civil war ghosts well i'm gonna leave them in the past any direction lord i be fine, it don't matter east or west, north, south, wherever the wind blows, I'm leaving those burdens at rest, this highway, it does not know my name, and I don't care, no, I don't care, heading my way for another place, and I got Tires and a spare